welcome to NASCON Studio. We are at the Technology and Leadership Forum 2023, and I have with me Mr. Vivek Mahajan, CTO of Fujitsu. Thank you so much, Mr. Mahajan, for speaking with us. Thank now, you for having me. India has created a digital architecture to effect socioeconomic change. Do you see socioeconomic change tying in with profitable growth for companies as more and more data is being generated? Do these two go hand in hand? Socioeconomic change tied to profit growth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because um, I think uh, technology is a great driver for socioeconomic change. I'll give you an example. Um, uh, you look at banking in India, right? It really took off um, after, yeah, de well, well, demonetizing COVID are, are now, but, but when the phone revolution happened, right? A lot of people did not have the fixed line in India, right? Because that requires massive infrastructure. But what that created was that the, the technology change uh, that leapfrogged, the, that obviated the need for a fixed line and moving that to a mobile phone. You could do banking on your fingertips. You have people who are, you know, uh, 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 who might not even have a home, but they have a now proper bank and do, do the thing. And this is not just in India. You go to, India was, you know, 20 years ahead, but you go to Africa, it's now the same trend that you're seeing. So that's driving a massive economic change. Now, to drive this economic change, you need technology. People need to, at the end of the day, make money, right? Not unhealthy profits, but they need to make profits, and they would. So I, I, think it go, I think it's actually a healthy, virtuous cycle that you uh, drive technology, and you technology then creates uh, the agents for change. Sustainability, which is, kind of, which is now, uh, you know, which suddenly the world is woken up to when it's been there for forever. Um, uh, it, the, de the digitalization is going to be key for that, uh, and, uh, and digitalization is going to be driven by technology. So absolutely, I do. Okay. Uh, when it comes to creating virtual worlds, immersive experiences uh, for users in the metaverse, what developments can we hope to see in the future? So metaverse is, uh, you know, I, I don't want to call it, I hate to call it a buzzword, but that's, that's what it what, that's what has uh, become right now, right? But if, if you just step away from the word metaverse and think about a virtualized world, right? Uh, like your avatar, right? Or, or something like that. Um, uh, that is where the, uh, you know, uh, your, uh, uh, I guess, uh, 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 expression of your personality in that space. But it, it is, uh, it's to me, it's an extension of leveraging technology to drive, um, uh, you know, what uh, advancement of, uh, you know, your day-to-day -day business, your personal efficiency, your professional efficiency, and, and and if you look at metaverse, uh, for example, the real retail experience, I'll give you an example, retail experience. You can, uh, today you can buy through Amazon, but you can't really go and look at a virtual store, if you will, and say, I want to pick this, pick this, pick this, and we have an in-store experience. That's what metaverse should, you know, it seems to be. But, but it is, all it is is you need artificial intelligence, massive amounts of artificial intelligence. You need security. Um, yeah, you need high-powered networks. You need a lot of compute to do that. Uh, uh, and that's what uh, that's what's gonna you know get metaverse more and more enabled. So you think that you do physically, you can do virtually. We have a, we're doing some work with a, a automobile manufacturer. So think about a Formula One car race. You like Formula One? I haven't seen much. Sorry. So or car racing, right? Or, or any kind of racing. Right? This is a, so when, when you when you look uh, at the racing, most of the people audience who goes to a Formula One car race. Uh, you know, is uh, I would say eighty percent of males. I mean, that's it's not discriminated. That's it, it, that's how it is, right? Uh, I mean, guys like uh, the, the F one car racing. So, but you know, to expand that reach of the attraction of F one, you want to get their spouses interested, their kids interested uh, in the whole whole experience. How do you do that? you create a word they can enjoy the race virtually so uh so they can virtually pick over this is my favorite driver you know he likes this or she likes this you know these are blah 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 and, and this whole but you can't do that uh if you don't have the right technology that's where meta and that's in metaverse right 
So uh, 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 it, it, they become audiences as spectators. Uh, and this is a way to monetize that, but it's also the technology now enables. And that's where you know Metaverse is headed, like a lot of the virtual experience, your manufacturing, uh, your banking. Uh, I don't know whether good or bad that you can stay at your home, in your home and do everything. You know, you, your social uh, interaction probably or your social skills are going to go bad. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a metaverse kind of a guy. I'm more of a face-to-face -face kind of a person. So uh, sometimes it's hard for me to relate that. But my job is to provide the technology to make sure that happens. So how do businesses uh, pivot today to adopt technologies or, uh, you know, functions so that they are ready for uh, unforeseeable future events. Because we, we, we saw what happened in the pandemic. People adapted, but they adapted. It was reactive. Can we do something now so we are ready to pivot? Well, look, there will always be events that you can't predict. I mean, something might happen here tomorrow, you won't know. So so uh, so that, is, to me, you know, somebody says that you got to be always be ready for the unpredictable. That, that's an oxymoron. You can't. Right? But what you can do is you got to be agile. You got to be able to react faster. There are things that you're going to have to react. Right? I mean, nobody expects an earthquake in Bombay. Right? But what if an earthquake happens? You, you, you have to be ready for it. So what technologies do you adopt now to be say, ready for that tomorrow? I'm not sure whether you can be ready, ready for it. Right? I mean, a big earthquake happens. You cannot be ready for it. Right? I mean, you, the thing is you can be reacting faster. The technology, you know, there are all kinds of things. Yeah, you can use massive amounts of data, process that data, artificial intelligence that tells you, what if you do this scenario, this, this, this will happen, right? What if an earthquake happens right here under the Hyatt Hotel and, uh, you know, the probability of uh, surviving is this, 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 you should take this step, you should build this. The thing then comes in place to, 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 uh, to be ready, what's the cost equation for that? In a country like Japan, for example, uh, and it's a very earthquake ready country, right? Uh, uh, the buildings are built that if earthquake eight happens, it, it, you, you'll be okay. I live in an apartment that's where the building shakes almost all the time every day. You're like, uh, you know, if you're not used to that, you're like, my building is shaking, right? But that is how the earthquake proof buildings are built, and there's a cost to it. But those are the simulations you run. Technology helps you do that, technology helps you plan for that, plan for the unpredictable. But you can't predict the unpredictable that because it is the unpredictable. But you can plan and prepare for it. So how do you see the future of talent uh, for these emerging technologies? Because uh, you have to skill and be ready for all of this. Uh, there is demand supply gap. And for emerging technologies, how does the skill set come up to speed? See, there's a, there's a shortage of talent. There's a shortage of talents uh, worldwide. I am you know, running the technology for, for my company. I see, if you were to ask me, what's my number one business challenge? It's talent. Uh, and, and by that, talent at all levels, but especially high-end talent. So, for example, we are, we announced we're going to make the two nanometer chip. Think about two nanometer. You two know, nanometer. two nanometer chip. Okay. Two, na two nanometer chip. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two nanometer is really small. very, very small, right? So, uh, I mean, Moore's law is, you get to one nanometer, and then after one, you can only get to zero. So you won't have anything to zero. So it's two nanometers. But how many people can design that? It's not just in Japan, worldwide. Uh, and uh, or, or 5G to 6G technology, electron to photon chip, or um, artificial intelligence, blockchain. I mean, the, you know, the, the skills for these are in short supply. Uh, and, and to prepare for that is, uh, you know, I, th I think, India's got a great opportunity because it's uh, uh, the population is young. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, hunger for learning new uh, software, hardware skills, uh, scientific skills, physics, math. I mean, they become more. You go to the world of quantum. You cannot understand quantum. You cannot take somebody who's done social sciences and ask them to become a quantum quantum engineer. It's not going to happen because if you don't understand physics, you can't do quantum, right? So, so those are, you know, uh, uh, very important skills. And then how do you apply that, uh, those skills to, for example, sustainability? Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, what does that mean in, 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 in terms of uh, social sciences? 
uh, how do humans react to that? We talked about metaverse. How what does that mean in those? Uh, so so I think it's all kinds of technology, uh, you know, learning about it, uh, keeping up to pace, trying to innovate, think out of the box. Um, I think uh, you know that, that's what I will encourage. Uh, but uh, talent is in short supply, and I think India is in good position to to supply that high value. We at Fujitsu view India not as a low cost talent. Uh, the uh, gap, but a high value talent supplier. Uh, but you told me about the challenges that exist, that you are short of good talent and the opportunities as is that you have a huge STEM graduate pool, etc. But what's the solution? How do they come up to speed to the technologies and the requirements? That Look, that's that's not an easy thing to do, right? It's not an easy thing to bridge to. Uh, the thing is, you've got to keep abreast of new technology. That is you got to continuously brush up your skills. There's no magic wand that you say, okay, abracadabra, and it's going to happen. It's not. Uh, for example, artificial intelligence, you got to be constantly learning, constantly challenging. And I think the another thing is having a very flexible mindset to think out of the box. Those are critical thinking skills that uh, I wouldn't say that is just like, uh, to me, the question that you ask, how do you do it? It is like learning new uh, skills, uh, continuously brushing up your skills, there's, there's nobody who's saying, I'm okay, I'm 21, I finished learning. It's not, you, you would be out of skill. Uh, in, in no time in this in this business, right? Uh, you, you haven't learned anything for the last two years, you're out, right? You're, it doesn't matter what age, you're continuously learning, continuously thinking out of the box, thinking about innovative uh, solutions to the problem. Uh, you know, that's, that's what it's gonna take. And, and I think that's where I say, uh, because it's uh, such a, a big talent pool in India. That's why it, it was an opportunity. The people cannot be just saying, I'm doing just rote work. Uh, you cannot be satisfied with um, your uh, given uh, work environment. You gotta, yeah, you gotta, you gotta be critical. Uh, you know, you might have a PhD and still might not be good enough, but uh, you know, you might be, uh, you might be just a grad from 10th, but if you have a very flexible, open mind to, uh, to approach problems, how to fix those problems. That's that's what's needed. All right, Mr. Mahathir. Thank you so much for speaking. Thank with you me. for having me.